to me doing this since I'm recording and so at the end of the day I reach my classes I put these up on the lecture YouTube channels so you can find them there so if there's anything you want to review it'll be there all right so this is called the Cornell method of taking notes it's a really great way of taking notes I don't know if you've ever heard of it before but uh, there are some medical schools that we're talking about people who have gone through pre-med uh, now they're getting ready to be doctors med schools, force them to take notes this way. I'm not going to force you to take notes this way. I'm just trying to show you it's a legitimate way of taking notes and people really believe in it and it really works your brain in the ways that it needs to be worked in order to learn new information. Okay? So, you just split it up. Give yourself a little column right here. Write uh, brief things to yourself, like a question that you might have while I'm talking or something of that nature. Okay? Just a brief little thing about what's going on. Here's where you would just take notes like you, have, like you normally would. You just start writing things down. If I'm writing things down, you want to write them along with me, that's where you would write that, okay? So as we're going along, and you're taking your notes here, okay, one big thing would be, if you have a question, if something pops into your head that's confusing at all, write that question down right here, okay? Maybe at the same time that you're writing this question down, raise your hand, all right? So you're gonna, you're gonna ask this question, but uh, you may raise your hand without writing it down and kind of forget uh, where you're at or not be able to pay attention to what I'm saying. When you write it down really quickly, you'll never forget it because it'll, it'll be right there. Okay? And then you can uh, also know that it's going to be there. You don't have to remember it. So you can continue to pay attention while you raise your hand and wait for me to call on you. Okay? So then, uh, somewhere, in the course of you asking a question or me just uh, going on to the next thing and your question gets answered anyway or somebody else asks your question. So the question gets answered, uh, and write the answer to that question right over here, okay? And the idea is when you're all done, you kind of have uh, a bunch of bullet points, a bunch of questions that you can ask yourself, kind of quiz yourself on what happened that day, all right? Does that make sense? If you were to cover this up at the end of the day, you could quiz yourself just based on these questions that you wrote down over here. So it's really important to this, this method of note-taking that you write your questions down, right? Even if you ask them right away, and I answer them right away, write them down. Because there were a question for you at one time, and you may kind of forget the answer to that question later on. All right? So you can go back and quiz yourself on those questions. Make sure that you remember those answers. And you might want to give yourself, because the answer might be down there, you might want to give yourself a little arrow saying that question and answer go together. Okay? Um, so that's that. So you, this kind of con condensed down to this. All right? And then our brains need to be uh, challenged further in a different kind of a way. Okay? So now we force ourselves to write a brief review of what happened on this page. And you could do that after you are done with that page, you could do it at the end of class, you could do it at the end of the day. But you take a, a look here, and you write a little review, like one to three sentences, what's on this page, okay? So here we learned about fractions, we learned about adding and multiplying fractions, that's all that fit on that page, that's what you put, okay? So you remember all of that stuff. And when you go back, uh, with your homework, maybe before you start your homework, you just take a brief look over your notes, make sure you know the answers to the questions that you are on the left side, and I, I promise you you'll find your note taking much more fruitful than it has been. If you take great notes, and you love your notes, you don't have to do it this way, but if you feel like your notes are kind of like, I don't know, I, I write them down, and I never look at them again, they don't really help me, that's what my notes look like, or did when I was in school. Um, Start taking them this way because they become much more reviewable when you do this. Okay? So that is my strong advice to you. Alright, so based on what you guys wrote down and my experience, as I said, we're going to just start out with some things that tend to uh, be speed bumps throughout the year. Alright? The first would be fractions, they always tend to be an issue. So we're going to start there. Um, I'm going to try and help you. With fractions, all right. So let's start there. So, if I write this guy down, 
was that again? Two divided by three. Yeah. Two divided by three. Okay, it is, a, it is division. Yeah, it's two divided by three. Yes? Point six computers. Okay, so if it has in decimal form, it's point six. Okay, yes? Two thirds. Two thirds, right? That's a pretty straightforward way of saying the fraction. All right. Um, if we want to create a visual of this, what would we do? Do a pie chart. Okay, so we got a circle. We do our best to cut it into thirds. And that's the first thing. All right. What part of the fraction does that picture that I just drew relate to? The bottom, right? What's the name for the bottom? So the denominator. Yeah, the denominator. Okay. So. That is this guy here. Uh, how many pieces the whole is cut into today? That may seem painfully obvious to you. I didn't add know that. Okay, but as we talk about it more, and as we add and multiply and divide fractions, all those kinds of things. Uh, that's our denominator. That's just how many pieces the whole, the whole <coughs> pie, the whole whatever, is cut into. Okay. And how would I, with this pie chart, then complete my illustration of this fraction? Yes. I have one. I have this other one. I have two of them. And what are them? I have two of. Then what do I mean? Two of what? Anything. Uh, in this case, pi. What? <laughs> two two one-thirds. Yeah, two-thirds of a pi. Two thirds. Yes, two-thirds of a pi. Two pieces that are a third in size. Okay? So one thing tells you how many I have. The other thing tells you how many make up a whole whatever. Whole pi, whole. I don't know what you mean. You have to read for some reason. But uh, just a whole. Uh, now, now we understand that. Now we can talk about uh, adding and multiplying fractions. These tend to be the, the biggest roadblocks. Okay. So you may know how to add fractions, but I want to make sure we know why we do the things that we do. Okay. So let's talk about adding some fractions. Like two thirds plus four fifths. Okay. So I'm sure. We'll get the right answer out of a lot of people. What do we need to do to add these fractions together? Do we need to have a common denominator? We need to have a common denominator, okay? Then I'm gonna ask why. Why do we need to have a common denominator? If you ever find common denominators and you feel like, I just do it because I do it, and I don't really know why, hopefully we can change that. We're going to challenge that way of thinking throughout the year, okay? So why? Justin. Well, if you don't have a common simple thing, right? Trying to put together two things, we're trying to collect them, trying to sweep them up into one pile, say how many you have, but if I add these together, this is a common mistake here, uh, we get six eighths. Okay, what did this person do? I'm looking for new people, I got Jester, I got Justin, they're dominating the market. Yes, uh, I've got a name in my hand, but I'm not sure, so. I was right. At, right? Okay. So, what did they do? They didn't find a common denominator and they just added the top and bottom. Yeah, the top and bottom. Okay. What might, like what other operation of fractions might they be confusing us with? Multiplication, multiplication and division. Multiply straight across, right? And then we find the multiplication again and multiply straight across. Alright, so if we are a process based a learner, uh, then we have tried to memorize what we're supposed to do in each situation, and uh, we've memorized it wrong. All right. But if we think about what are we doing, we're adding them, we're collecting them together. Just like if I have, that's not my best. I have an apple, another apple. If 
know, I have two apples and three oranges. When I try to add them, all I'm trying to do is say how many there are all together. Right? That's addition. We learned that long, long ago. Two puppies and three puppies all together, that's five puppies, right? But when I try to add two apples and three oranges, and I say I have five of something, then I run into a problem, right? Because I'm trying to put together things that are not the same thing. And that's, that's it right here. This is not correct because we're trying to put together two things that are not the same. Okay. Now with apples and oranges, I can't really make them the same. I mean, you call them fruit, but that kind of defeats the purpose. It takes away lots of information. Now I can't reverse engineer that and figure out how many apples and oranges that's made up. Okay. If I have fruit, it would be lots of different combinations of, of apples and oranges. So we lose that information. But with fractions, we can, we can fix that. So first we know that we need to have the same kinds of things. I'm going to do my best to draw what we have. So there's our 2 thirds. And fifths are a little trickier. OK, so we have 1, 2, 3 fifths. And you can see they're different sizes. And when I try to say that I have five of them, there's four, four of them. When I try to say that there are uh, six of something, I then I'm at a loss for what to call them, right? Because they are different things. So visually, what can we do? How can we make it so that these things and these things are the same kinds of things? Bridger? Make them the same size. Make them the same size. Find the common denominator. OK, let's do it physically, or at least as physical as this picture is, OK? What am I going to do with these pieces to make these pieces the same size pieces? Asking I'm asking you again. How am I going to make the pieces in this pie the same size as the pieces in this pie so that I can now say I have so many pieces? Of the common side. denominator and then redraw it. Mm. Why would you just dealing with the pictures? Why don't we just find the common denominator? <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, uh, I'll ask you, Caden, Caden, Caden. Okay. Um, to get the common denominator, you do three times five and five times three. You know, you just let's talk about the pictures. You know what you want. No, I want to know like physically. If you had like two pizzas, like two pizzas, yeah. and you wanted to actually physically cut them up so that you have the same size pieces, what would oh. you actually physically do? Bridget, coming so back to you. Okay, cut them into fifteenths. Okay. How would I do that <laughs> with how would I do that with, with each of these pieces? What would I do to each of these pieces? Slice them five ways. Slice them five ways. Slice these and all of these into five pieces. Yeah. Okay. So if this is in thirds, if I want these all to be 15 pieces, then I need to slice each of them into five pieces. Right? And then over here, I need to do what? Slice them into three pieces. Slice each of them into three pieces. Slice them into three pieces. Okay. So there's a, a, a picture representation of what we're doing when we're finding the common denominator. Okay? If you just find common denominators and you have no idea why, I would challenge you to stop doing that. Right? Go deeper. Understand more than you already know. Right? If you try to progress through this class or through any part of life just coasting on the things you already know how to do, then, well, then you would not challenge yourself. Okay? So this is the first time for you, and the best you're going to do is, is realize that you're supposed to define common denominators. Great. If you already knew about common denominators, deepen your understanding. Um, so we've cut all, both of these pieces, like we've cut them down so that the size of the piece uh, that, that makes up the whole is 15, right? We have this times five and this times three. Each of the entire things are cut into 15 pieces. Now we're comparing the same size pieces. Right? Now we need to figure out how many pieces we have in each. How many fifteenths do we have here and how many fifteenths do we have over here? Uh, well, 
In cutting every piece into five pieces, we also cut these two pieces into five pieces. Uh, this one is five times more. This one also is five times more, so we're going to multiply this by five over five. We're going to multiply this by three over three. Ten fifteenths plus twelve fifteenths. Okay. So I hope that if you're ever adding fractions and you wonder, was I supposed to add straight across? Am I supposed to, what am I, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. Remember at least, when I'm putting things together, I need the same kinds of things. I need apples and apples, oranges and oranges. I cannot put two different things together. The most basic thing you should understand is that thirds and fifths are different things. And if we want to add them together, we need to have the same kinds of things. Okay, so we make them into fifteenths. Right? That's something we can do with numbers that we can't do with apples and oranges. I can't turn apples into oranges or vice versa. But I can turn thirds into fifteenths and fifths into fifteenths, and then I can add them together. Does that make sense? Are there any questions about that? Yeah. I feel like this is too easy. That's fine. It is something that you should have done. I mean, there is no part of the algebra, book, the algebra 2 book that says this is how you add fractions. But you know what I find every year? People struggle with fractions. All right. So be sure that you start off on a good footing. Okay. So next let's talk about Multiplying fractions and why it's done the way it's done. Uh, multiply two thirds by uh, sevenths. Okay. <coughs> so, how do we multiply these two fractions together? The numerators and the denominators. Multiply them straight across. know that you do that. Can anybody explain why? I'm going to have a fraction and I have this other fraction. And I'm going to multiply these numbers together and so the rule is multiply straight across. But that has to follow from all the things that we know about numbers. So why is it that I would multiply straight across? And I mean if you had learned to multiply this guy by that guy and get that number and this one by that one and get that number, you would do it that way, because somebody told you to do it, right, for the most part. But if that would have been wrong, right? Somebody could have conceivably taught you the wrong way, and you would do it that way. And until you thought, why do I do it that way? Why would that be the answer? You wouldn't have known any different. Okay, let's think about why we multiply fractions just straight across. Why does that work? So let's start with, kind of have to start from some starting points. Let's say that multiplying by five sevenths, five sevenths is defined how much five sevenths of something is. Just like if I take uh, 10 and I multiply it by one half, what I want to find is half of 10. Right? How big is that? How big is half of 10? Here we want to find how big is five sevenths of two thirds. So let's start with that, that basic place. Okay, well, then I want to take two thirds like it's the whole thing and figure out how much five sevenths of that is, right? So I want to, here. Um, the simplest way to, I think is to, I mean, it would be great if I could take this and easily cut it into seven pieces. That's, how, that's what I mean to cut it into sevenths and then take five of those. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
has taken an easier one like um, it's five sevenths of Five sevenths of fourteen, so fourteen pieces. So I got fourteen pieces. It would be nice if I could just cut that into seven pieces. With fourteen, I can. I can just cut that into fourteen pieces, or uh, seven pieces, excuse me, because it's just that convenient. So that could be. One piece, and I could cut it like that. Every other place, I could cut it into a seventh, and then I want to find five sevenths of that, right? So I count five of those, right? And one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And I see what I have. Well, I've really just cut it down into single things, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Eight, nine, ten. Right. So, ten of them. Okay. Just Jeff, what's next? So you multiply across the bottom to find the common denominator to be able to do that. Right? Well, it's not a common denominator. I don't want you. I don't want to confuse you. Yeah. Like an addition. So it's not common denominator. It's 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 like that. I don't want to find like. I just want to find out how big the pieces would be. Does that make sense? I'm going to find out how big are the pieces going to be when I cut them down into smaller pieces. Right. So we have this thing that our size one third, right? This is a third, this is a third, this is a third. Right? So now we're in the, we're in the two thirds. We're going to figure out of this two thirds, how much is five sevenths of that? Okay. Well, definitely the surefire way would be to take each one of these and cut them into seven pieces. All right? Okay. Well, cut them into seven pieces. So I've cut it into like each one of these. I've cut it into seven pieces. Right? So now we've accomplished the denominator part okay. by finding out how small the pieces are now altogether. How big are the pieces now? What size are they? Twenty Yeah, they're they're twenty firsts, right? So of the of the whole piece, the whole pie or whatever you want to call it. Now our pieces are of the size, basically 21 of these will make up the whole, right? And now we're gonna figure out, if I count up five sevenths of these, how many 21sts will I have? Well, each one of these thirds, each of these two thirds, is cut into seven pieces. I should count five of them in each, right? Five sevenths would be five of the seven that make it up. So I'll count this one and this one, two, three, four, five, Five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I need to do that over here. Two. One, two, three, four, five. But what did I really do? I have two of them, and each of them I want to count five. That's two groups of five. That's multiplying two times five. Okay, two times five is ten. So all we're really doing is taking these size pieces. We're going to have this many times more than this to make up the whole. If each of those things that uh, are thirds are uh, cut into sevenths, how many pieces will now make up the whole? 21 of them will now make up the whole. Okay, so we're just figuring that out. And up here we're figuring out, okay, so now they're cut into sevenths. If I take each of the two that I have in the thirds, and now each of those is going to be, uh, I want to count five of them in each uh, of those pieces. I want to count five here and five here as two groups of five. So I'm going to have 10 pieces that are the size, 21 of them make up the whole. Does that make sense? Okay. That's why we multiply straight across. So here's the big thing that I am hoping this accomplishes, is that you don't get confused and do something like 3 sevenths times 4, uh, I don't want this to be share anything, uh, 11 but you don't get confused 
gets confused a lot. Okay? People will see two fractions and they hear multiply and they remember that at some point in their lives there were two fractions and they did cross multiply them. Right? That's not multiplying fractions. This explanation to help you see why that is not the case. Right? Let's examine that mistake and see if we can hopefully obliterate it from your minds. Right? So, for someone who makes the mistake of cross multiplying, they might do 3 times 11, you get 33, and 7 times 4, you get 28. Okay? Could you imagine someone doing that? That could happen. Have you ever done that? Made that mistake? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me at least give you like maybe a little bit of a trigger your brain might send to say, wait, that, that doesn't seem right. I don't think I'm supposed to cross multiply here. When I multiply two numbers, does it matter if I multiply them in the order they're given to me? Uh, if, I give, if I give you two times three, can you just do three times two and that's the same thing? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. so keep in mind that what we just did was to go like this and put that number there, go like this and put that number there. The same thing would be to do four elevenths and times three sevenths. So if I switch the order, it's called the commutative property of multiplication. Let me do the exact same process, but with the numbers in this order. Okay? I did three times 11, so if you do four times seven, what do I get? 28. If you do 11 times three, what do I get? 33. Now I got the exact inverse. What are these called when you have a, a fraction that is flipped over? Reciprocal, exactly. So we have a reciprocal. Well, cross multiplying to get the product of two fractions cannot possibly be the right thing to do, right? Because at least I've proven that wrong because if I switch the order, which I should be able to do, definitely know that that is okay. When I do it and I follow the same process, I get a different answer. That needs to not be the case. You have to get the same answer when you multiply in two different orders. If I switch the order, it shouldn't change anything when I multiply. So something is wrong. I shouldn't cross multiply. I should multiply straight across. So at least that, at least maybe put that on the side of your paper as a little note or down in the summary. When you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across and at least give yourself the reason if I cross multiply, I wouldn't get the same answer if I switch the order. Okay? At least that will stop you from not doing the correct thing. Even better, though, would be that you could explain what's really going on. Okay? What is it? What, what's happening when we multiply two fractions together? Okay. We started with pieces that were this big. Each of those pieces is going to be cut into this many pieces. So how many pieces will there be all together to make up the whole? 21. I started out with two of these things. Each one of these two, I'm going to count five of those little pieces now that are inside, five of those little pieces that are cut into sevens. So how many of those pieces will I have? I'll have two times five of them, 10. And if I switch the order of these, five times two is 10, and seven times three is 21, and we'll have the exact same thing. Okay. And now, <coughs> let me just quickly say, if you get that, I think you're going to be fine with this. I won't bog you down with too much uh, information today. Uh, let's see. I want to test each other out. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to divide a fraction by a fraction. Okay. I won't force everyone to look at an explanation of why we do what we're about to do, but we'll just remind you of it remember this little thing, then and along with all the stuff we've already talked about that could be in good shape. So what, what is it that we do when we, when we take a fraction, we divide it by another fraction? Yeah. Multiply by the reciprocal. Now, this is, I ask because it's a mistake I see a lot, which reciprocal? So we are even wondering if that's correct, right? So we're going to make sure that we know it's correct. Catherine? Only Sure? Yes. Not the top one. That's the sure? Yeah. Who's sure that it's the bottom one? The denominator? Who's not so sure? Okay, good. Being honest, I appreciate that. All right. So, yes, it, you do multiply 5 thirds by the reciprocal of the denominator. You multiply 5 thirds by 11 ninths. Okay? Now here's a really simple thing to help you hopefully remember that. When we have a fraction, let's take a, a simpler one as an example so we don't get too confused. Two thirds 
this is probably something you know you can multiply any fraction by any number over itself, right? I can multiply this by 5 fifths. In fact, if we wanted to get a common denominator of 15 that's what we do, right? The numerator and the denominator by 5. Correct? Yeah. And that goes for any number. If you have 1,000 over 1,000, it doesn't matter. Okay? And that's because, I'm just establishing this as like a legal move. What is this equal to? 1. 1. one. I can multiply anything by 1, yes? And it doesn't change its value. It might change the way it looks if I multiply it by 1 in this way. Uh, but it doesn't change how much it's worth. So I can multiply this fraction, like this whole fraction here, by anything I want. Yeah? Okay. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator. Who do you Keisha. need? Which shot? What? Keisha. Keisha. Okay. She'll be right back. Okay. So I'm just going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay. So by. 11 ninths and 11 ninths. Okay, we already know that this is what we're supposed to do to get the, this quotient, right? So that should be the right thing to do. A little reminder of that is, what happens down here in the denominator? What do we get? Four. We get one, we get 99 over 99. So really what we get is our quote answer over one. And when we have something over one, we don't need to bother writing it over one, right? So the product now, or the, I guess the quotient, the original quotient is 5 thirds times 11 ninths, so we get 55 over uh, 27. If you ever see me struggle with a simple addition or multiplication problem, don't be surprised. So it's, don't make fun of me too much. If we tried to multiply uh, basically 9 elevenths by 3 fifths, let's kind of experiment with that. We're going to get 5 thirds over 9 elevenths. We're going to try the other thing because we're not so sure. We try to multiply by the reciprocal of the numerator instead. So we'll do that here. We'll do that here. Okay. Legal mathematical move: just multiplying the numerator and denominator by the exact same number. That's fine. We get the reciprocal. We get the reciprocal of the correct, uh, the correct answer. Right? So we get one up here, and down here we get 27 over 55. Now this is still correct. Like if you did every uh, fraction divided by fraction this way. The same would be right, except for it's not fully simplified. So one over a fraction, you can rewrite as that fraction, that fraction is reciprocal. So one over 27 50 fifths is 55 over 27. The trouble you run into is if you rely on your memory and you forget which one is supposed to be the reciprocal, you use the reciprocal of the numerator, you're going to give me 27 50 fifths as the final answer. Of course, it's not correct. So here's a little trick to remember. We multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. <coughs> All right, so let's uh, start to close out fractions here as a thing that I teach to you. All right, I won't teach you any more about fractions until it comes to algebraizing them, that means putting variables in them and dealing with them then. Then I'll just remind you of the things that we're supposed to do with fractions. When we add them, we get the common denominator. When we multiply, we multiply straight across. When we divide, we multiply by the reciplical of the denominator. Right? Let's keep that all in mind. Is there any questions about any of this? I mean, this is an opportunity for you to get the full teaching of something that might be a little tricky. Still a little confusing for you. Okay. Then, let's go on next thing and we'll just get into it barely. Alright? And it is mostly like a vocabulary thing. So much of what's confusing about algebra, uh, graphing, um, evaluating, solving, uh, zeros, x-intercepts, uh, all these things can be really answered if we understand what a function is. Jumps ahead a little bit, but a function is a simple thing, and then we're going to take that function's understanding. We're going to go into graphs so that you understand how simple a graph is. Okay, the connection between a function and a graph is something I didn't fully understand until I was in college because nobody really bothered to take the time to sit down and say, "Look, here's a function, and here's a graph, 
I love how simple it is that they're connected. I always thought, well, here's a function. I know it's this kind of function. I know its graph is supposed to look like this. I'm not exactly sure why, but I do know the, the points to find. I'll find those points, and I'll draw the curve that I know it's supposed to look like. Right? And it was a process. And it overworked my memory, and it did not tap into my understanding. Okay? So simply put, a function is uh, most often an equation that we uh, are, are given, or that we write down, we create maybe. It's an equation where you put something into it. And what happens when you put something into it? Yeah, no. You get something out of it. Okay? That's different from an equation that you solve, right? Because when you solve an equation, you have one variable. It's not really an input. It's just an unknown value. I don't know what it is. I'm going to figure out what it is. Okay? I'm not worried about that right now. I'm worried about functions. Functions. Okay. Can anybody give me an example of a function? In equation form. Justin. F x equals 2x plus 5. Okay. I'm going to use y, but that's great. Equals 2x plus 5, you said. And x plus p. So, yeah, so that uh, takes the form of mx plus p. We, we may know all about that. We may ring a bell. Uh, not too concerned about this graph right now. All I want you to understand is. You can put things into it, and you get things out of it. That's that easy. When we talk about a function, and later when we talk about function notation, like Justin just said, f of x, we understand what a function does. It becomes so much simpler. It doesn't have to be this mounting weird thing, notation, then all of a sudden makes that all that much more sense. Okay? So, let's see. We're just about done. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to write some problems up here, a little bit of review about fractions. Uh, and a little bit of practice with functions. We're going to use uh, Justin's function, uh, and I'll give you a couple more. So with that one and with this one, uh, we're going to throw that guy in there. I just want you for both of these to uh, input three numbers each. And that's it. You can feel free to go at any time and have a good day. But I just want you to come back with, you put three things in, and also you kept track of what comes out. All right? You should put a number in, see what comes out, keep track of that in some way. Put a number in there. Get what comes out, keep track of that in some other way. Okay? Come back with that. Don't worry about the fractions here.